This video is brought to you by Robinhood, the investment brokers that let you buy stocks, ETFs, and cryptocurrencies all commission free. There's still time to take advantage of this historic 2020 stock market crash. And if you sign up using the link in the description below, you'll instantly receive one free stock without even depositing a single penny. No, this still isn't my real portfolio, but I have added to it a bit like the stock on your screen. That's Cody. They make like makeup, Revlon, stuff like that. What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Got some awesome doors for you guys to check out. Starting off with some Ojama action, or I guess you could really call this the uh, the Chaz dot deck, the Manjume Thunder dot deck, because all of uh, Chaz's archetypes, despite the fact that there really shouldn't be any actual synergy between them, there are some cards that actually link up all the cards so that they do kind of work together. And um, it's always funny how the Ojama deck actually works. But yeah, it can make some impressive good boss monsters and generally speaking it's strong at breaking boards i don't think you ever want to go first with ojamas because the deck really doesn't have any place so basically you are always going to want to blind second and no matter what your opponent makes in their first turn, most of the time cards like Kaijus, Dark Ruler No More, Slumber, the same cards you see in like Blind Go Second Crusadia, those are the same cards you will use to take apart your opponent's cards. And also, like this deck benefits, Ojamas have always benefited since the creation of Ojama Blue of kind of running their little monsters into opponent's bigger monsters. So like that's why the Kaijus work double time because you can wait for your opponent to make a big impressive board. You Kaiju their most important monsters and then you take your ojama blue and run it into the kaijus and then you can start making advantage you guys will see all of that momentarily but this is a good setup when your opponent has all of these negations that they're building and all of this disruptions obviously they're not going to have very strong follow-up plays and that's when you hit them with the things like game of seal plus slumber and your opponent's not going to have anything left now we obviously know that the uh the ad emancipator deck can make a much stronger board than this but this is just an example and you did happen to all well, the ojama player or the Chaz deck dot player did happen to get the ojama blue and this is like your core combo right here so kaiju there drag knight get that off the field take away their negation and then go ahead and hit them with that slumber i think it would have been better if he went for desert lotus uh off the effect or De desert locust off the effect of um of hall of Fibrax, but i don't think out emancipators i don't think they play that card anyways he's gonna go ahead and go for the ojama blue and what you want to do is you want to combine this card with your ojama match that allows you to summon another ojama blue when you uh you know get your search off and then you can just ram it into the same kaiju this play always does take a lot of life points but it's perfectly worth it because you're of course going to be making your hand insanely big and then you can actually start turning you know though you can turn your big hand into like actual tangible advantage you you usually get to summon like abc dragon buster throughout the course of this play and uh you know sorry yuja because you want to use those abc pieces for actual like link fodder and link materials but you want to get them in the graveyard so that you can summon dragon buster as well you get more impressive fusion monsters but none of them are as impressive as the monster you guys are going to see momentarily. So he's going to go ahead and summon that, uh, that XYZ Dragon Cannon. <laughs> this is this is up to player preference. Do you want to give up Dragon Cannon and Dragon Buster to summon your A to Z Dragon Buster Cannon? Once you start getting this high, it's like, I, it's, it's hard for me to even remember the differences between some of these damn cards. But this guy does have hard negation. He does require a discard, but the thing is, he's not a hard once per turn. This is why you might think that it's worth it to summon this, especially if you've already went ahead and broken your opponent's board. The chances of them outing him in their second turn, third turn, they just become progressively worse and worse and worse. And uh, it's a very high attack card. It's a uh, 4,500 attack right now. Well, he got a little bit of a boost from, um, from what, the Saryuja Skull Dread. But you can see he's using that negation. And another cool thing that this deck can do is, since you're playing the Ojamas, even when you look at your board and you're like, okay, Cap, you got one big beater. The great thing about this is, usually you can go into, oh, man, see, number 46, the Ronin Raccoon, the uh, the, the baby raccoon one. I, I, he'll be summoned in a second. I don't know if he's 46 or 64. And you get the attack of your A to Z dragon. So he's going to go to Red rescue uh cat 
that gives him his rank two. And let's see what number you are. You're number 64. Yeah, you go for your Ronin Raccoon, and then this guy, like the token that he's going to summon, is going to copy the stat line of the Ronin Raccoon or of the uh, A to Z Dragon, which is just like crazy. Also, he actually used level monster shout outs. <laughs> that is one subtype I really wish Konami would revisit because outside of Horus, they were just atrocious during the, the uh, GX era. The only like competitive one was Horus, which maybe I might need to make a video on that because a lot of people don't know anything about like Horus and the fact that it actually was pretty decent. But I really wish they would go back to like levels and kind of, you know, try to revitalize that. Anyways, Ojama takes a very easy W right there. Second duel, going to be Buster Blader versus maybe the worst plunder patrol player i've seen in, in quite some time man these people gotta learn how to play plunder patrol because this ain't it chief first off i don't think if you're playing plunder patrol i don't think you should ever put yourself in a position where you don't have any plunder patrol cards during your opponent's turn because then if you tag out for whatever sailboat you can go for the white the purple or the black sailboats it doesn't matter if you can't use their effects and if you can't use their effects they're basically just they're not good cards they're basically just like beaters at that point this buster blade of play could have been stopped he could have went for well now i can't go for anything yet it does his opponent does have to have a field he's gonna go for list purple sailboat and now he has negation the problem is he doesn't have any cards in his hand in fact he gets the two best sailboats look at this He's got the black sailboat and the purple. One banishes a monster, one negates monster effects, but he doesn't have any actual plunder patrols. Now, maybe he could have gotten lucky and drawn one with the effect of, um, I believe it was Blackbeard, which lets you draw a card, and that would have just been, you know, kind of a luck sacky play to happen to draw a plunder patrol card. But if, you su if you're summoning these big plunder monsters and you don't have any cards to discard, you're not going to be in a very good position. You can see that he's drawing cards with uh, Metaphose Fusion, but honestly, he's just looking for a board wipe at this point. His monsters are powerful, but when your opponent has the Buster Blader Lock of Destruction Swordsman, the Fusion, and then Buster Dragon basically they're just going to win at that point you need to have like spells and traps to kind of break this monsters are just not going to do the job unless you know those monsters are like the winged dragon or a spear mode or kaijus or something like that all monsters on field become dragons and your opponent's dragon monsters cannot be put in attack position also they can't attack so basically it's like it's like number 41 they're like switched to defense mode they can't use their effects either last duel which uh, I definitely did not click on because I'm uh, being silly here. Last duel is, let's see, going to be Luna Light versus uh, the Mecha Phantom, uh, Mecha Phantom Beast. <laughs> Super Quantums. We have too many archetypes in Yu-Gi-Oh. Sometimes remembering all of them is like a hassle and a half. Anyways, Luna Light's obviously lost their best card, which is uh, Luna Light Tiger, but they can still do some like pretty decent things. I mean, if your opponent's just going to go with IP Mask Arena plus one monster, that's not really all that difficult to possibly break through crackdown coming in super clutch also this is crazy right i just realized this crackdown and ip mask arena is such an insane combo because you take your opponent's monster and then that's like you know obviously a one for one but then you use your opponent's monster for the ip mask arena so that's like instead of using your monster use your opponent's monster maybe that's why orcus are you know running crackdown in the ocg anyways he is going to go for tiger king for that tanky looking to negate the effects that forces out the ip mask arena he is going to go for the hakai or the uh, unchained link four which is not bad he does have the luna light fusion that's going to get hit with solemn and this is where the duel was so close he's going to go for the copy of saber dancer and she is a beater she's a beat stick and a half the problem is not quite enough damage i don't believe to actually win the duel he's going to block out effects in the battle phase which actually no that would be banishing i think he just got the poly back with kaleido chick and leaves him with 200 life points you guys know when that happens in the anime or on this channel the person who left them with a, a little bit of life points almost always loses the duel you gotta close out duels people um you know she her effect in the graveyard giving your monster 3000 attack is super dope but i feel like luna lights their their margin for error is almost zero at this point like it's just not a deck that without tiger without being able to get pluses every single turn they, they they're basically back to the original you kind of have to one shot when you do have that opportunity the opponent now went for you know typical halifab racks with aurora don into borload savage plays and i think that they are going to ultimately win you see the uh Luna Light player at the top actually ended up scooping it i don't i don't know if it was necessary to like scoop here to be honest because even if you're like his top deck was blue cat 
Blue Cat could have ran over here out of the Arc Light, and then Blue Cat does float upon battle. So chances are, like, they would have gotten to see another turn, and you never know what you can top deck during that next turn. They may have actually top decked, I don't know, like a, a copy of uh, Luna Light Fusion or, you know, something like that. So I don't think that they actually should have scooped there. But regardless, they did end up scooping it up. Anyways, let's just take a second and check out some of these decks. We got the Ojama deck first, which, um, I mean, this is pretty much... The norm of Ojama's, as I said, Ojama is strictly a go second deck. I don't really think it has any good turn one plays. So you always are looking to run like Kaijus. You're always looking to break your opponent's board if you are playing Ojama's. It's been, my goodness, it's been so many years since I've seen Summoner Monk and Rescue Cat in this, and like basically like the Synchro Cat days, since I've seen three of each in the same deck. And uh, you can also take Ojama's, like I've seen builds of like 60 cards, by the way. So you can take Ojama's to a very high level when it comes to number of cards and oh my I, I swear i saved this or i swear i sorted this anyways this is the buster blader deck which um i thought i sorted and saved but I, I think i just didn't save it it does have a lot of crusadia monsters in here which is actually pretty interesting anyways if you guys are interested in either build of the deck of course they will be in the description below thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos